Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am sorry this book haul is really late. I have actually had a chest infection and I have been laid up for the last week. I've done a lot of reading, which is great for um, the end of the month, but uh, I just wanted to share the books I got in May. Some of these were given to me by my mum and dad. I wouldn't necessarily get them myself, but they're here. Oh, I look really weird. <laughs> the lighting in this room. So I've got a fan here, it is so hot, I'm just going to pop it on. I hope it's not going to drown me out because I'm so hot. So the first one I've got is Jack Higgins uh, Confessional. This is one my dad picked up for himself. I'll read anything as you know. So this one says Mikhail Kelly's credentials were impeccable. Russian mother, Irish father, hanged by the British. He could split an apple or a head across a large room with a handgun and his special talent was acting. The KGB gave him the perfect part, assassin. For more than 20 years, Chuchulan has created chaos, fear and disorder in Ireland by hitting counterproductive targets on both sides of the border, making fools of British intelligence and the IRA. But Chuchulan is a man whose time is nearly up. The one person who can identify him is the beautiful Tanya Voronovova, <laughs> sorry about the pronunciation, daughter of a KGB general and the one person who can persuade her to defect is Liam Devlin, poet, scholar, IRA gunman, retired. Hunted by the combined forces of British intelligence, the IRA and the KGB, who now regard him as an expendable embarrassment, Chuchulan prepares to hit the most counterproductive target of all time. That sounds all right to me. Uh, this is the sort of stuff I like. Uh, my mum gave me this one. This is a huge brick of a paperback. Uh, Penny Vincenzi, An Outrageous Affair. I don't know, it might be really good. The truth often hurts, it can even kill. A mysterious tragic accident in the 1950s, an explicable suicide 20 years later, what was the strange link between the two and Caroline Hunterton's long buried past, a secret which could not be kept forever, especially from her two daughters, Chloe and Fleur. Fate had separated the sisters in time and distance, but bound them in a mutual hatred until journalist Magnus Phillips decided to tell the story that would tear their lives apart. Moving from wartime Suffolk to 50s Hollywood, from glitzy Madison Avenue to London's theatrical aristocracy and the machinations of a checkbook publishing, an outrageous affair explores the extraordinary, sometimes fatal, consequences of truth. The fact that it's got a Hollywood and theatrical collection is probably really good. I will probably actually quite enjoy that one. Changed the battery already. Okay, next on the list is another, whoops. Sorry, second hand, whoops. Uh, book which I picked up in a uh, charity shop. Originally came from the works. Panic by Lauren Oliver from New York. Right. Panic began as so many things do in Carp, a poor town of 12,000 people in the middle of nowhere because it was summer and there was nothing else to do. And in this legendary game where the stakes are high and the payoff is even higher, everyone has something to play for. For Heather and Dodge, the game will bring new alliances, unexpected revelations, and the possibility of love, first love for each of them, and the knowledge that sometimes the very things we fear are those we need the most. It's okay. Sounds all right, doesn't it? Another one, second-hand one, that my mum gave me is Lisa Scotteline Dirty Blonde. She's a federal judge facing a trial of her own. Ooh. This one was given to somebody for Christmas 2006. There you go. It was, uh, oh. Anyway. This says, when attractive, sexy and tough-minded Kate Fonte is appointed federal judge, she's thrilled. But at the same time, not all she can belongs in such distinguished company. At only 36, she feels intimidated. And although she looks apart in, a ch in Chanel and a chignon, she is terrified. But Kate keeps her doubts a secret and mysteriously much, much more. For Kate leads a dark double life, one that she doesn't even tell her best friend about. It all comes suckingly, shockingly to light with a murder case which comes before her. Overnight, her secrets are spilled all over the tabloids, her boyfriend dumps her and her judgeship is in jeopardy. And when a killer comes after her, she runs for her life, embarking on a journey that ends in her own murky past. Again, sounds quite good. So, on to the ones I picked up. All of them are new apart from the first one, uh, which is Ready Player Two. I loved Ready Player One. I haven't read this one, so I thought I'd pick it up. Oh. So, 
Days after winning, Oasis founder James Halliday's contest, Wade Watts makes a discovery that changes everything. Hidden within Halliday's vaults, waiting for his heir to find lies a technological advancement that will once again change the world and make Oasis a thousand times more wondrous and addictive than even Wade dreamed were possible. With it comes a new riddle and a new quest, a last Easter egg from Halliday hinting at a, hinting at a mysterious prize, and an unexpected, impossibly powerful and dangerous new rival awaits, one who will kill millions to get what he wants. Wade's life and the future of the Oasis are again at stake, but this time the fate of humanity also hangs in the balance. Lovingly nostalgic and wildly original as only Ernest Klein could conceive it, Ready Player Two takes us on another imaginative, fun, fun action-packed adventure through his beloved virtual universe and jolts us thrillingly into the future again. Now, I do believe this one is more 90s based. But, um, and I know that people don't like it as much as Ready Player One, but I did want to get it because I have Ready Player One and I wanted the matching cover. So I, got, I just got it on eBay. I do a lot of my book shopping on eBay, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. On to the newer books, the ones I purchased new, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So not many, not a very big haul this month because I'm trying to cut back a bit. So, yeah. And the first one is Marilyn related. It is The Other Side of Marilyn Monroe, Joe DiMaggio, Hollywood and the Afterlife by Brian Harker Johnson and Denise Lascano. <clears throat> in 1950s, Marilyn Monroe became box office sensation, unlike any ever seen in Hollywood. She may even be more popular today, as the lyrics of Elton John's Colonel Wimp put it, your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. Marilyn Monroe was found dead in her home, 12305 5th Helena Drive, on the morning of August the 5th, 1962, at just 36 years old. Her fans around the world still wonder if it was foul play or suicide. Do they? Do they really? In the other side of Marilyn Monroe, journalist Brian Harker Johnson teams up with internationally known medium Denise Lascano, I've never heard of her, to see if they can connect with the Hollywood starlet and find out what happened on the night she died. Okay. One I've been waiting for. Normally this author puts a book out every year. Last year he missed. I was gutted. Had to wait for this year. I believe this is book six in the Vinyl Detective series. Attack and Decay by Andrew Cartmel. The vinyl detective has been hired to acquire a rare record, demonic metal, for an eccentric client, Owen Winter. Why can't rockers spell their names normally? Because he spells it Owen, O-W-Y-N, Winter, W-Y-N-T-E-R. So far, business as usual. Only this time our hero just has to listen to the LP and authenticate it. So the detective and Nevada are off to Sweden with Agatha and Tinkler along for a jolly. It won't be a jolly for long though. Once the brutally disfigured corpses begin to pile up, the jolly, jo jollity quotient tends to plummet dramatically. And what's worse is the record is an ugly slab of savage industrial noise and the colourful personnel of the band have decided to turn up in town and feature high on the list of suspects. I must admit. I do like the Final Detective books. Uh, the only other, well, it is the only non-fiction because unless you want to call this non-fiction, I would sort of put this as um, indeterminate, is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and Other Lessons From The Crematorium by Caitlin Doughty. Now, Caitlin Doughty has a YouTube channel. It's called Ask a Mortician. It's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. She does all sorts of good uh, videos about death, dying, funeral practices, embalming, um, different types of funerals you can have from eco, recomposing, cremation, traditional burial and embalming, re reconstruction. There's nothing gory on here, to be honest. It's just very informative. It's a brilliant channel, so go check it out as Ask a Mortician. But this book, from her first day at West Wind Cremation and Burial, 23-year-old Caitlin Doughty threw herself into a curious new profession. Coming face to face with the very things we go to great lengths to avoid thinking about, she started to wonder about the lives of those she cremated and the mourning families they left behind and found herself confounded by people's erratic reactions to death. Exploring our death rituals and those of other cultures, she pleads the case for healthier attitudes around death and dying. Full of bizarre encounters, gallows humour and vivid characters, both living and very dead, this illuminating account makes this otherwise terrifying subject inviting and fascinating. I am completely with Caitlin um, and a few other people with the thought that we all gotta die. We all gotta die. 
since Victorian times, and the Victorians were the worst for this, these are the ones who have made it what, why it's so terrifying. They mystified death, they hid death. Before people lived with it, they dealt with it, and they moved on, and it was a, a wheel, it was a circle. The Victorians mystified it with all their rituals and their black mourning wear and their great big mausoleums and tombs. But in learning about death, you take away the mystery. If you take away the mystery of dying, you take away the fear, which means you can enjoy your life better. Clark Gable said it in The Misfits, dying's as natural as living. A man who's too afraid to die is too afraid to live. And there's no point because it's going to come to us all and all we can do is live the best life we've got now without worrying about what's going to happen in the hereafter, whether you believe in the hereafter or not. I am looking forward to reading this. I'm going to be reading this one very, very soon. So look out for that on the channel. I picked up two book talk uh, favourites. I picked up, well, this one's been doing the round since YouTube years ago, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Now, I'll be honest, the only other Colleen Hoover book I've read is Verity, which I did enjoy. Oh, I've got an eye eyelash stuck. So I thought I would pick up another one. So I got this one. Uh, it's not exactly love at first sight for Tate Collins when she meets the tormented and secretive Miles Archer. They wouldn't even go as far as to consider themselves friends. The only thing Tate and Miles have in common is a mutual physical attraction that can't be denied. Once their desires are out in the open, they realise they might have stumbled on the perfect no-strings arrangement. He isn't looking for love and she doesn't have time for it, so that leaves just the sex. What they've got could be surprisingly satisfying as long as Tate can stick to the two rules <coughs> Miles has for her. Never ask about the past and don't expect a future. They think they can handle it, but everything is different when real emotion starts to change the equation. Hearts get infiltrated, promises get broken, rules get shattered, love gets ugly. You'll have to excuse me coughing, this is the remnants of the chest infection. I'm feeling a little bit ugh. But it's okay. And then because, I mean, some people love the next book, some people hate the next book. <coughs> no, it's not COVID. I have done a test. In fact, I've been doing them intermittently over the last few days. And that's uh, where the crawdads sing. Um, I just thought I'd pick it up to see what it's about. For years, rumours of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barclay Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be loved, when two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty. Kaya opens herself up to a new life until the unthinkable happens. Excuse me. Sounds good though. Sorry about that. And the last book um, that I got this month is the Stephen King for the month, which is The Dead Zone. It's a lot thicker than I remember it, because I've read this before. This is my June Stephen King. I was six months through the challenge and I'm doing fine. And this one is waking up from a five-year coma after a car accident. Former school teacher Johnny Smith discovers that he can see people's futures and past when he touches them. <coughs> Excuse me. Many consider his talent a gift, but Johnny feels cursed. His fiance has met someone else, and people are clamouring for him to solve their problems. When Johnny has a disturbing vision after he shakes the hand of an ambitious and immoral politician, he must decide if he should take drastic action to change the future. Now, I love this story. Um, it has been made into a film with Christopher Walken. I've not seen that film, but it also was made into a television series. With, I think it was Anthony Michael Hall was his, is his name uh, and obviously the series is a lot longer it, it doesn't dwell as much on the outcome of the book which is to deal with the immoral politician though he does come up in it sadly the series was axed before it could get into that section of the book um, but it's still a really good story I'm really looking forward to rereading this so this is a reread and a new read uh, and my Stephen King for the month but those are all the books I picked up in May. Uh, what do you think I should read? I mean obviously we're halfway through June now and um, I have read a lot of books already but is there anything on this list? Other than Stephen King and Smoke Gets In Your Eyes 
because I'm going to be reading them next that you think I should be reading um let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in a next one <coughs> which will be when I stop coughing my wrap up of books for me I'll see you then